This is a strange one because mm -hmm. you're an experienced CES goer. Mm -hmm. I'm a somewhat experienced CES goer. Yes. We're here in person. Yes. We have a lot to talk about about what CES actually is. Mm -hmm. But for you guys, a really big focus on automotive technology. Yes. You have skip gen, mm -hmm. infotainment system that right. brings the Amazon Alexa voice assistant into right. the platform. That means right. you've got Siri from Apple. Right. You have Alexa from Amazon. There's some Android capability in there right. as well. Right. That's a pretty competitive offering. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? We're all about customers. Panasonic is in our business in US for 60 years, as a company 100 years. We really focus on our technology and solution for customers. We love our partners, but we really want to deliver a product and technology and service that fits mm. customer needs. That's what we focus on. When you make an announcement like this mm -hmm. at CES, it's supposed to be a consumer electronics show, right. right? It's about forward looking. Right. But does a product like that make you more competitive? Does it give you a pipeline of business? Um, yes, it does. And um, as a 100 years old company, and we grew up with CES too, we have more than 50 years of partnership with CES and CTA. And our uh, message this year is sustainability. And Right. You were yeah. on the front cover of CES magazine. I know. Thank Cal you very Penn much. Yes. is on stage. Yes. Why? He's our climate ambassador. And uh, what he brings and what he's passionate about and what we want to do is nice alignment uh, for our message. So what we're demonstrating on the floor and our message is we believe in our core uh, belief is contribution to society with technology. And I am and we are really excited that this year is all about sustainability for the future, but also for the current as well. Our biggest business in North America right now is EV battery. We also right. made another announcement two months ago to invest additional $4 billion for Kansas. Kansas um, uh, for the second battery factory. Right. And with that, we have 4,500 4, employees, as is, just focused in manufacturing EV battery. That's going to have another 4,000 employees, and we're really bullish about what we're doing in EV battery sustainability and electrification of transportation. You took us there. Let's stick with, with okay. EV batteries. We, we have to talk about Tesla. You know, the, the story around Tesla right now mm -hmm. is about concern for demand. Uh huh. My question to you is, if there's a drop off in demand for right. customers like Tesla, right. does that impact demand for Panasonic's battery cells? Mm -hmm. Or does a customer like Tesla mm -hmm. have to commit to some volume anyway, even if their demand for the end product drops right. off? We're not that concerned about that right now. Uh, we're trying to really provide the quality, quantity and quality that Tesla is looking for. We have about 10 years of experience working with Tesla, which has been wonderful. Um, as a Japanese, uh, 100 years old company working with Tesla has been a wonderful learning experience. We also announced the partnership uh, with Lucid. Yes. And we are uh, diversifying our uh, contribution in EV battery uh, for this market. And, and we're not worried, we're very excited. You talked about the existing commitments, Kansas, for example, uh -huh. capacity. Right. Panasonic's also talked about going even further, mm -hmm. more plants, more capacity for batteries. Right. Is another U.S. plant possible? Is there a timeline to kind of go even bigger? Because the story of 2022 was all about we need more supply, we need right. more supply. Right, right. And we feel that should continue. By 2030, 50% of the cars sold, it's anticipated, will be EV cars, right? And um, we have one factory with 4,500 employees. We are just broke the ground with another uh, big factories. So that's what we're going to focus right now. We have a very ambitious plan but that's what we're committed for the time being. I think a lot of competition is coming online in, in the EV space and mm -hmm. on the battery supply space. Mm -hmm. In North America in particular, is Panasonic in a position where you can kind of pick and choose who you mm -hmm. work with? I imagine if a small startup right. comes to you and says, we'd love some of your cells, mm -hmm. it might not be realistic for you. Mm -hmm. Well, we went through that uh, when we started a partnership several years ago, right? And uh, there is a pluses and we believe pluses and minuses in working with startups right. or uh, traditional OEMs. It provides us very different uh, technology advancement and challenges. So uh, that's what we focus on and the quality is what we feel really strongly about. And uh, we are not set in one uh, OEM versus another. Um, if it's a good partner, we will partner with them. Final question on EVs. Mm -hmm. You know, you said you were not concerned about the demand issues with Tesla. Mm -hmm. 
Is Panasonic basically in a, in a multi-quarter or multi-year stage of ramping up supply? I mean, is that the kind of trajectory of what is needed for this industry? Um, it's hard to answer. Right now, our operation in Reno is exclusive for Tesla. And we will uh, mass start a massive production in Kansas in, uh, by 2025. A lot will happen between um, now and then. Right. And we're really focused on production, getting the factory up and running, and really get make sure that the EV quality is there to support the, the demand that we should face. I told a small lie, one mm -hmm. more on EVs. Mm -hmm. 4680. Yes. It's interesting. Yes. Is, is Panasonic's work on 4680 directly tied to Tesla's success on 4680? Or are you able to kind of go at your own pace and your own path? So 4680 is really interesting. We're demonstrating a, a, a model uh, on the floor. Right. And um, the technology is something, Panasonic's battery technology is was there from very beginning in 100 years ago. We started with our consumer products and that's where we started. We're really focused on advancing the capability um, and excited about what we can do with 4680. And that's all I can probably say right now. Let's bring it full circle. Mm -hmm. You and I have been talking about this. CES, mm -hmm. Consumer Electronic yep. Show. Right. Should we just change the name and call it CCS, Consumer Car Show? Everything is about cars. Right. Um, so I met with Gary yesterday, Gary Shapiro. Right. right. And they intentionally call it CES, not Consumer Electronic Show. show. Right. Uh, and we're really happy how we have involved with partnering with CTA and we grow, we're, we're in North America more a B2B and solution business. Right, and that, on the EV battery cell side in particular. Including, right. right, and we have a lot of other exciting new technologies like uh, um, uh, green hydrogen fuel cell generator and we have a diorama that really shows how a house or a factory can really be completely net zero. So we have both going on at the same time, and it really fits with CTA's vision on how CES can evolve. So we're all about sustainability this year. We have wonderful story to tell for short term and long term, and it's working nicely with CTA.